So, after some incredible form, Derby County find themselves off the back of a second defeat in three games, beating Fleetwood 3-1 in between a loss to Peterborough and Bradford City. On Monday evening, they face Burton Albion. Burton travel down the A38 in what is considered an A38 derby. Most Derby fans don't class this as a rivalry, but the Burton Albion fans seem to. It's going to be a very important game for Derby County as they need to keep the pressure on the top two and make sure that they are staying within the battle. Obviously, no transfers have happened as of recording this video on Thursday night, but there is a lot to get into heading into this game. So, as previously mentioned, Derby County face Burton Albion at Pride Park Stadium. It's a game that is on Sky TV. Derby will be looking to extend their winning record against Burton Albion, having won 10 out of 40 meetings with the team so far. We're trying to hit 80 subscribers by February, so it's completely free. Make sure you hit that red button and let me know what you want to see on this channel. This is a very big game for Burton Albion. Obviously, they got rid of Dino Marmaria just around a month and a half ago, and they have just appointed their brand new manager. Gary Mills took caretaker charge, and he was instrumental in getting them going again, and they've been on a good run of form since he took the helm. Derby County, obviously, fans are wanting to show up from the squad, myself included, but none of that has happened yet. Burton Albion bringing in a manager that may provide a new manager bounce for the team. Shall we now get into a look at the league table, where the teams lie, and let's see what can come out of the game. So, as you can see, at the top end of the table, Derby still sit in fourth position, level on points with Peterborough, two points behind Bolton, and four points behind Portsmouth. Obviously, they have a game in hand on Portsmouth, so that could be a one-point gap once that game has been played. Bolton have two games in hand, on Portsmouth, but one game in hand on Derby and Peterborough. Obviously, hugely important game for Derby. They've got to try and keep the pressure on to the top end of the table because obviously you look at those teams behind, they're not that far away. There's six points between Derby and sixth place Barnsley and seventh Stevenage. Oxford just three points behind. They will still see themselves in the battle at the top end of the table. But you have to go a little bit further down to find Burton Albion right here in 17th place, just ahead of Wigan Athletic. Burton Albion have collected 28 points in 26 games. They are quite safe from relegation. There's about a five-point gap between Burton Albion and Reading. But obviously, Burton will be going into this game thinking, form means nothing, it's a derby game. In their opinion, it's a derby game. I don't think it is, but it's a derby game. They'll be going into it thinking, form means nothing. We can pick up a win here. And that's what their new manager will be saying. It's what Gary Mills will have been saying beforehand. And to be fair, Paul Warren might be using it in his pre-match meetings, talking to the Derby County players. Shall we get into a look at both teams' recent form and have a proper in-depth analysis of Burton Albion. So here is the recent form of both sides. As I said previously, Derby have lost two games in their last three. Obviously, it's obviously a bigger pitch than that. I think it's something like uh, nine wins in 12, but losing two of the last three, not great, especially the Bradford City game the other night. It wasn't a Paul Warren side and it wasn't what I expected to see when I went to the game. I was very disappointed with the performance and especially the likes of Louis Sibley and Tyrese Fauna, even Callum Elder, given the opportunity to build themselves a chance in the team and I just felt like they didn't take it. And it's one of them where there's been so many games over December and you're looking at it and you're thinking, can Paul Warren trust the players behind his starting eleven? And based on... Tuesday night's game, I would have to say no. Obviously, Liam Thompson's still returning from injury, so I don't want to put too much pressure on him, but I felt like he wasn't very impressive. And then obviously, like it's it's going to be injury heaven this week, but we'll get into that in just a moment. Let's now get on to Burton Albion. They've obviously won two of their last five. They've lost two as well, losing to Blackpool in the EFL Trophy and losing to Bolton Wanderers. They picked up two good wins at home to Bert, at home to Blackpool and Shrewsbury Town, picking up a draw at Wickham Wanderers too. And as you can see, their two losses both came away from home. 
but you can also see that Derby's two losses came at home. So it's a very difficult situation at the moment for both clubs. Obviously, Derby will be the happier of the two sitting up there in fourth position. So obviously, we're going to talk about Gary Mills for a little bit because he took five games as manager and he will be instrumental in the build-up to this game, knowing the players so long as he has been kept on by Burton Albion's new manager. He won two, drew one and lost two. And to be fair, from what I've seen on Twitter and from Burton Albion fans, he seems to have done a good job in rejuvenating the squad. So it's mega important that people don't forget the impact he had for them. And obviously that could work against us on Monday night. So just a little bit more on Martin Patterson. He's been appointed as Burton Albion manager. Uh, he was a former Burnley and Northern Ireland striker. Uh, he has coaching experience over in America um, and he joined Barnsley as an assistant to Michael Duff. Obviously, if you want to take a look at what Burton Albion said about Martin when he took the job, uh, make sure to click pause on the screen now and read through it. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I just thought I'd give you the opportunity. Well, it's that time of the season again. We've had a mega amount of games starting to feel like the start of the season again because we've got an injury crisis, especially on the right-hand side of defence at right-back. Kane Wilson picked up a knock against Bradford. Joe Ward has picked up a knock. On the left-hand side, Forsyth's picked up a knock. We're obviously still missing Martin Waghorn, still missing Connor Washington, still missing... Who else is that? Jake Rooney is obviously out for the rest of the season. Corey Smith is still missing. So Paul Warren has got an injury crisis on his hands and it's going to be a problem picking a side this weekend. But there is obviously an abundance of players with a lot of quality in this squad and I'm sure that they can put something together to make it work. We also got news this week that Elliot Embleton has left Derby County and gone back to Sunderland, obviously only making a couple of appearances and then got injured and hasn't been seen since. Obviously, it's unfortunate for Elliot that his season-long loan with us hasn't quite gone to plan, but he's out for another couple of months, I believe. I think he's still out until the end of February, so there's no point in us keeping him around and hopefully we can pick up another player in that loan slot. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to select my lineup and I'm going to talk you through each decision that I make and why I make that decision. We'll start off with the goalkeeper and work from bottom to top and we'll go through each player as we do it. So starting off in goal, I'm going to put Joe Wildsmith back in between the sticks. I feel he was harshly done by being taken out by Paul Warren heading into the Fleetwood game and hopefully he's available to play against Burton. Obviously Paul Warren claimed there was a little bit of a knock but then I'm a bit of a sceptic about that. I think he wouldn't have been on the bench if there was an injury because you need a keeper ready just in case there's a red card or another injury. So I'm hoping that he's back in the fold for Burton Albion. As you can see, I have selected the 3-5-2 formation. With a lot of injuries at right back, I feel like that is what we're going to have to go with. Obviously, Nelson can play as a right back if he, if needs be, but I have a feeling that Paul Warren will go for his favoured 3-5-2 system with wing backs. And I think the back three that I've chosen there with Cashin on the left, Bradley through the middle and Nelson on the right, I think that's probably the best back three that we can put out on the pitch. I'm a bit of a sceptic about Sonny Bradley at the moment, but obviously is now in a period where he's had a couple of games, he's getting a run in the team and maybe he can make a statement for himself and make himself a name on the team sheet weekly. So so I've selected my two wing backs. I've gone with Callum Elder and Tom Barkazen. Elder down the left and Barkazen down the right. Obviously Craig Forsyth is suffering a little bit of a little bit of calf tightness according to Paul Warren in the press conference. So Obviously, Elder's the only choice out there unless we decide to put Liam Thompson out there, but I can't see that being something going through Paul Warren's mind. I know it was done during pre-season, but there's no reason why it needs to happen right now. Barkazen on the right, I feel like it's the best choice out of practically no one, really. Corey Smith is out injured, so we can't play him out there. Wilson's injured, Ward's injured, Niambi is at the African Cup of Nations, Jake Rooney's injured, so we don't have anyone else to play on the right. Now we'll go and check at the midfield. So here is the midfield three I've selected. It's 
Bird and Horahan sitting a bit deeper with Mendes Lang in a bit of a free role in behind the two strikers. Obviously, that Mendes Lang role can be changed to have two number 10s and one striker up front. Uh, my team wouldn't change. Even if that changed, this would still be the lineup. Uh, I think Bird, I think he's been excellent recently. I know a lot of people seem to be giving him a bit of hate recently, but I think he's been excellent. Conor Horahan, I'm a bit torn. He's not a player that massively impresses me, but I understand his importance for set piece delivery and something like and stuff like that. But I just think sometimes he gets caught on the half turn a bit too easily. But that's something which can be rectified. Obviously, if we're playing this back three, we've got more defenders behind him, so it's a lot more comfortable. Obviously, Mendes Lang in that 10 role, we know what he can do. And I think giving him the opportunity to roam from side to side like he has been doing will be massively important for us getting a result out of this game. And then to finish off, I've gone with James Collins and Tyrese John Jules as a front two. I feel like John Jules was a little bit wasted against Fleetwood in the second number 10 role with Nathaniel Mendes Lang. But obviously on a bigger pitch, he'll have more space and more opportunity to get on the ball at Pride Park. So this is the team I chose. Obviously, Paul Warren knows what's going off and it wouldn't surprise me at all if one of Wilson or Ward was fit enough to play. Wouldn't even surprise me if Forsyth was involved. It's just one of those things. He's done it a lot in the past where he talks about injuries and then players are okay. But right now, we have quite a few and it's a bit could be a bit of an issue. So thank you for watching this match review of Burton Albion. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're trying to hit 80 before February. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and like and comment. Let me know what you think about this game and make a prediction. Obviously, I made my predictions earlier this month, so you can go and check that video out. I'll link it in the top right, top top right or left now, um, and I'll link it down in the description. So thank you again for watching. So I'll catch you in the next video. There'll be tomorrow. There'll be a transfer review out later on today, and there'll be a couple of filler videos over the weekend and a match day vlog out probably Monday night, but it might be Tuesday depending on what time I get home. So thank you for watching. I enjoy, I, I appreciate all the support and I'll catch you in my next video. Make sure to go and find me on TikTok pictured here and Twitter pictured here. These are the places where I'll keep you all up to date with all my upcoming videos and my thoughts and feelings around the Formula One and football weekend.